Good afternoon, chairpersons, colleagues, and friends. It's indeed my pleasure to be presenting our experience of the WFSA Thoracic Fellowship being running in our hospital successfully. I bring greetings from my hospital. This is the Sir Ganga Ram Hospital, which is a 675 bedded super speciality hospital situated in the heart of New Delhi. This is where it is in the northern part of India. Our hospital has state-of-the-art centers where we do a lot of joint replacements, transplants, including cardiac transplant, pediatric surgical procedures, and thoracic surgery. We do more than 400 thoracic surgical cases per year. This is my department, the Institute of Anesthesiology with 42 consultants and about 20 residents. We have a few fellowships running in our department under the aegis of our academic department of the hospital. However, we were very keen to start the thoracic fellowship under the aegis of the WFSA. This was because ours is a state-of-the-art thoracic surgical center and our anesthesiologists are very well trained. So we thought along with w under the WFSA, other anesthesiologists from the developing countries who need exposure to this field would benefit. Therefore, we started discussions in 2014 with Dr. Wayne Morris, who was then the chair of the education committee of the WFSA. All formalities were documented and the fellowship was approved in 2015 when our first student from Nepal arrived. We decided to have the fellowship for six months duration and have one fellow in each session. Accommodation was provided by the hospital and a nominal stipend given to the fellow from the department. This is the thoracic anesthesia team and they decided what the curriculum would be. The curriculum extended right from didactic lectures, OR teaching, preoperative preparation, hands-on training on various skills that were required for the surgery and post-op critical care management as well as the pain management. The didactic lectures extended right from the anatomy, physiology, anesthetic management, complications, and the post-op care, including acute and chronic pain management. They were exposed to the unique challenges which are distinctive to thoracic anesthesia, like the proficiency in the use of the various types of tubes, double human tubes, optimal ventilation strategies with the ventilators, the fluid management, the guidelines which have changed recently while performing thoracic surgery and the post-operative protocols. We were aware that since these fellows would be coming from different parts of the various countries, they would have a lot of problem once they reached Delhi International Airport where you know how the population is. So we gave them clear instructions what we expect them to do or what they should do once they have cleared their customs so that they would not be fleeced by anyone. They were also asked to prepare a small presentation by which the department got introduced to him. The highlights of the fellowship program were the advanced surgical procedures that they saw of the lung, the mediastinum, and also procedures like esophagectomy and diaphragmatic hernia. They saw a spectrum of cases, right from open procedures like lobectomies, as well as the video-assisted wax procedures, decortications, which they saw in plenty. Robotic surgical thoracic surgery was also seen by them. Tracheal reconstruction, for which our center is gets all the referrals of tracheal reconstructions and we do, the student would get at least two to see in this six months duration. They visited the bronchoscopy suite 
where they saw the ultrasound guided bronchoscopy, the endobronchial ultrasound, as well as the mediastinal bronchoscopies. They had an exposure, hands-on, on the equipment for thoracic anesthesia. They did try fiber optic bronchoscope after about three months, after, of course, trying on the mannequins, the double lumen tubes, the univent tubes, bronchial blockers, easy blockers, as well as the cardiac output monitors. Ultrasound as well, the paravertebral blocks and the epidurals done under ultrasound were seen by them. This was interesting in 2016, which we published. This was an innovation of CPAP by one of the departmental colleagues. And so the fellows also got an exposure for the research and innovations that they can do later on. At the end of the six months, they were, of course, evaluated. They presented case presentations were, of course, done whenever they saw a very interesting case. But there was an exit examination in which there was an MCQ paper as well as a YYOC. We started the training in 2015 and in about six years, or to be exact, in five years, we have trained seven fellows from different countries. They were mostly from Nepal, but we also had from Philippines and Mongolia. These are the fellows who were here with us. We also asked them to give us a presentation of their experience that they had while in Sir Gangaram doing the fellowship. And it was very interesting when they presented to us the various kinds of procedures that they saw. And we could actually experience the confidence that they have gained while they were with us. They also had, some of them even had a hands-on on trying the bronchial blockers. This is one of the students getting his fellowship. This is a fellowship which we give from our side because we have done it with our Gangaram Institute of the Post-Graduation Medical Education and Research. And of course, they get one later on from the WFSA. Incidentally, there were two at this time. One was just finishing, whereas the other student had just joined. Dr. Miodrag had visited us in 2017. We were very lucky. And during that period, Dr. Miodrag had a very interesting interaction with a fellow. This is one of the moments when the, the students all have a light moment during the OT hours, and they're all having a little chit chat. At the end of the fellowship, before they depart for home, there's a farewell, an informal farewell given to them. It's very heartening to see emails which we receive. They are always in touch with us and the other fellow members. And it's nice to know that they are actually, some of them are working with thoracic surgeons and they are also very confident of doing other cases which are very high risk in their pulmonary complications. And they say that, yes, we are confident of conducting anesthesia for these patients. Because of this high volume surgical center that we have, we've been lucky to edit a book on clinical thoracic anesthesia from which these fellows also benefit. Hopefully the pandemic will settle down and we are hoping that we should be able to start resume our fellowship at the latter half of this year, probably sometime in October, and get our, one of our fellows back. Thank you very much.